Hi, I'm Barry Sahajan. This tutorial is about advanced left-hand bass technique. So, in that first example, I was playing a G minor triad. I played it three octaves from the third fret all the way up to the 24th fret, three times. And how I did this without jumping up using position, which is the way guitarists and bassists most often play, is I used longer stretches on, on one string at certain points when I'm playing these. So I'll show you how to play that first lick, but I'd like to leave that for later in the uh, tutorial so you can get, you know, get to know this technique a little at a time. It takes a little work. So let me break it down and show it to you. So we got the uh, G minor triad, and in the first octave, I'm playing it the same way uh, it's, most people would play it. First finger on the third fret of the E string, fourth finger on the sixth fret of the E string, and then first finger on the fifth fret of the um, A string, which is a D, G, B flat, D. So you notice I'm playing, I shift when I get to the fifth D, I shift to the first finger, which you wouldn't normally do if you were going to stay in position. You would just go something like that. So we got this. Now here's where you do the, some stretching to, so to enable you to cross the neck so easily. So from here, I'm going to a G up here to start my next minor triad. So I have a stretch. It's pretty big, but it's actually economical because I'm not really moving that much. If I were to do it by shifting a position, it would look like this. And you know, that's not economical at all and it would be very difficult to play these triads fast. So you go, you have the, then you stretch up, you're grabbing your G right here. And you're starting over, you put your first finger on the eighth fret of the D string and then here's another stretch. Instead of using, uh, instead of um, using this finger, I'm going to use the second finger. So it's kind of a stretch like this. I'm doing this so I can get up even higher. So, and then the D or the fifth on the D string, 12th fret, and then the G on the 12th fret of the G string. And then I go up another minor third. And there you have it. So let me play it slowly and we'll move on to the next exercise. Okay, let's take a look at example three. I'll play it slow and then I'll break it down for you. Even slower? Okay, so this um, actually starts with the same triad I used in a previous example. Like that. And the um, only thing is they started up here. And it, it includes three triads. The first triad is like, just like the uh, previous triad I, I had in, a, in uh, example two. And then it adds another triad that has a different shape in the middle. And then it goes back to the same triad uh, that I originally showed you, but only up here an octave higher than this one. So it's like three parts. So you have the initial triad we've already looked at. That happens twice, at the beginning of the lick, at the end of the lick. In the middle of the lick, we have a triad that is uh, shaped like this. So let's go through it now. 
I'll explain what fingers I used and position. So we'll start here. The G on the on the uh, tenth fret of the A string, the index finger, and then the B flat on the thirteenth fret of the A string with the baby finger, and then we have the D on the twelfth fret of the D string, and then we have the um, beginning of the second triad, which would be the seventeenth fret on the D string, and it would be a G with the baby finger, and then we go up to the uh, B flat on the G string on the 15th fret, and then we have our D on the 19th fret of the G string with the baby finger. So we now have done the first triad, and then the second one that has a different shape. Now we're gonna play the last triad, which is the same as the first triad. I hope I'm not confusing you, but anyway. And so that would be G on the 17th fret of the D string, and then the B flat on the, on the 20th fret of the G string with the baby finger, and then the 19th fret of the G string, which is a D, and then we get to the, the octave on the 24th fret. So that's it. So the only thing about this is that if you're playing a Fender, you don't have 24 frets. So there's no reason why you have to be committed to play this in G. You can play it in any other key, and it's advisable to learn it in a few keys so you can use it in different songs. Maybe learn, uh, learn it in a key of a, a favorite song that you'd like to play. Uh, rip off this lick, you know, to show off or, or make the song sound better, even better. So I'm going to show you this in D. So we start here. And so so it will work any place on the neck as long as you uh, can stay within the range, you know. Uh, you can uh, naturally only, the highest you could start it from, would be this G on the 10th fret because uh, if you had 24 frets because you'd run out of frets. So anywhere down from, you know, wherever the uh, range of your instrument is. I, I, I forget, what does the uh, Fender bass have? 19 frets, 20 frets, something like that. Anyway, so you can uh, play it in most keys. Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. I never did cover the very first exercise and uh, it's a little involved, and I'm saving that for the next video. I'm going to not only explain that, I'm going to go a little further out and, and uh, explore some other areas that you can use this and some ways to use it, rather. So um, if you like the video, please subscribe.